It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you very much to the Global Fertility Academy and Mark Serrano for the invitation. Our agenda is about cryopreservation and vitrification protocols. As the other colleagues, I'm a clinician, but it was very nice for me to check these this papers and to assist the presentations in Lisbon. So we have to divide our presentation in three topics. First, we have general outcomes with cryopreservation and vitrification. Uh, two papers, an oral presentation that was towards a freeze-all policy, and then another, another one that is very interesting for our biologists to check uh, clinical outcomes of multinucleated embryos. Is it worthwhile vitrifying them? And then uh, a discussion about closed uh, versus open systems for cryopreservation, in fact, closed system for cryopreservation, and then uh, vitrification and cryopreservation media. Uh, the, the, the various cryoprotectants we have been using in our labs. So uh, the first one, general, general outcomes with cryopreservation and vitrification. Uh, this paper was presented by Mateus Roque, that it's a Brazilian, Brazilian and he works Brazilian. in yeah. clinic origin in uh, Belo Horizonte, Brazil. So the first, the first presentation by, by Mateus Roque. The background was, although fresh embryo transfers is the, the, the norm is still now in most IVF centers, there is an increasing interest in the freezing all policy. So what is it? It's where the entire cohort of viable embryos is electively preserved and a delayed frozen thawed embryo transfer is performed. So what is the, the reason of this? Is the potential advantage of this strategy uh, in the embryo transfer uh, performed in a more favorable intrauterine environment, which may improve outcomes and, of course, safety. So the aim of this, the, the presentation was to evaluate existing evidence, if we have now ex evidence of comparing fresh embryo transfer and the freeze-all policy with respect to implantation, endometrial receivability, IVF safety, and obstetric and also perinatal outcomes. So let's see uh, what we can uh, affirm today is that FIT is associated with improved pregnancy rates versus fresh embryo transfers. In fact, uh, as Mateus presented, uh, not, not only ongoing pregnancies, but clinical pregnancies were more efficient if a, a frozen embryo transfer. In fact, uh, this is a meta-analysis, and we can affirm that just over 30% of uh, frozen embryo transfers are a better option. Again, we've, uh, if we ask the fit results associated with improved, are associated with this improved the implantation and live birth rates versus fresh embryo transfers. You can see here, this is a paper from Shapiro, a retrospective cohort study is associated with 3.8-fold higher live birth rate versus fresh embryo transfer. Following, again, is associated with fewer ectopic pregnancies. This is a uh, paper for Laura Londrum, based on impressive numbers from the SART registry. And there was one study that FIT is associated, in fact, with 65% reduction in ectopic pregnancies. And there are uh, other studies that shows that also reduces antepartum hemorrhage, placenta previa, and placental disruption. So it look, looks like very nice. Feet is associated with a lower risk of preterm birth, of a slow for gestational age, and 
uh, low birth weight versus fresh embryo transfer. Uh, here there's a, a small flaw that was already presented in another paper in the morning that uh, frozen embryo transfers have the risk of a large babe syndrome is increasing. This is many other authors are presenting data in, in this direction. Fit is associated with lower risk, okay, if the ob all the obstetric outcomes are better. Of course, we will have lower risk of perinatal mortality versus fresh embryo transfer. Uh, okay, so reducing 32% the risk in frozen tra transfers. Again, the second flaw is that placenta creta is increased with feet versus fresh embryo transfer. And again, uh, hypertensive disorders a little bit also increased. Very few problems in, in, in face of so many good news. So the conclusion of the presentation was that feet is associated with lower risk of OHSS and all the other obstetric outcomes. F uh, fresh embryo transfer uh, is associated with a lower risk of placenta creta, hypertensive disorders, and large for gestational age. So, given the benefits of feet versus fresh embryo transfer, clinics, clinicians, should consider a freeze-all policy for the majority of their patients. So this was the first presentation. Okay, the second, the second presentation was a poster uh, by uh, the group of Lisbeth van Landijt, that is from Belgium. And she presented clinical outcome of multinucleated embryos. Is it worthwhile vitrifying them? Very, very interesting presentation, this poster. You see, multinucleated embryos are associated with increased risk for a neuploidy for, and lower implantation rates. So they are preferentially not, select, not selected for a fresh embryo transfer. However, some of these multinucleated embryos are cryopreserved when they develop into morphological morphologically good quality embryos. So the aim of the, the, the paper was to assess the clinical outcome in single embryo transfer of vitrified, warmed, day three embryos and day uh, five, six blastocysts that showed multinucleation in the early cleavage stage. So this is why I told you that it's good for our embryologists to check this. So the 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 material and methods, retrospective study, single embryo transfer warming cycles. Mm, multinucleation was typed. Pay attention to this K4, more than, uh, more, uh, two or more nuclei in more than 50% of blastomeres. Outcome parameters, clinical pregnancy rate, uh, and fetal heart beating and outcomes were compared according to the type and day uh, of this multinucleation. If you see this, this table here, just here in the beginning, a key here in the bottom, CPR and implantation rate was significantly higher after day five, six vitrification compared to day three. Of course, blastocysts, we think that we will have better results. But no, there were no difference in implantation rates and clinical pregnancy rates when the multinucleation was seen in day one, two, or three. Okay? Good. But let's see what happened. So when they, uh, the, the embryos vitrified, vitrified on day three that showed multinucleation on day one had a higher clinical pregnancy rate. That is, that was the, the point in, in, this, in this paper, that sometimes we prefer, we still prefer to transfer on day three. So this could be a, a good marker to our labs to check is this day one. 
they, they, if they go to, go to good morphological embryos, it's better to check if we are going to transfer day three, how they were, the multinucleation on day one. And so the conclusion, multinucleation embryos may have a good implantation potential, especially when cultured up to day 6-5. OK, blastocysts, this is not news. But for embryos cultured up to day 3, a high implantation rate was found when the multinucleation was seen on day 1. It seems preferable to culture multinucleated embryos to day 5, blastocysts, uh, and selectively vitrify those blastocysts. But when cryopreservation on day three, selection criteria should take into account the day multinucleation was seen. I, I thought it was very nice. Well, uh, then uh, the, 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 there's a topic about closes versus open systems that I told you, in fact, was an oral presentation about a closed system. I, I think closed system systems devices for cryopreservation uh, the, the, the papers are not very common, and there's a large discussion about this and about the problems. Uh, I, I had to ask help for help with my, my, my people that work in the lab. And uh, this is another paper from Belgium, this Anne van Langendont from Louvain University. So the background was vitrification is used for the, the cryopreservation of surplus embryos after transfer and where there's a risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome or impaired endometrial pattern. Closed and open vitrification devices are available. Uh, however, there are concerns that this lower cooling, the slower cooling rate in closed vitrification devices could affect the embryo develop development, de developmental potential. So the aim was to assess outcomes after closed system vitrification, day two, day three, and day five embryos, and to test wh whether the day of the embryo vitrification or the method of the endometrial preparation could affect the, the pregnancy outcomes. 60% were uh, natural cycles, and 40% uh, the endometrial was prepared. So retrospective observation of a study between two, uh, from 2008 on, almost 5,000 embryos, good quality surplus embryos. After warming, they were cultured for 24 hours and transferred. The, again, I said, natural and hormonal replacement endometrial pre uh, was prepared. The post-warming survival rates were similar for day two and three embryos, but you see, interesting, a little bit lower for day five blastocysts. It was significant. But although significant, and you know, although a, a large number, they uh, state in the, in the presentation that the survival rates were similar, but tended to be lower after warming day five. I didn't understand this tended, but okay. But in fact, although tended to be lower, the final result, the best clinical outcomes were seen after the transfer again of blastocysts. So clinical Pregnancy rates, implantation and live birth rates were all higher of, after transfer of a warmed day five blastocyst. Okay, the conclusion, 24-hour uh, post-warming survival rates were similar, tended to be lower after day five, but the final result better uh, blastocysts. And implications, when enough good quality embryos are available, it may be advisable to prolong culture to day five and to transfer warm blastocysts. I'll say the message, the message all the time is, okay, vitrification, but okay, let's blastocyst. And then uh, the, this, uh, there was another presentation, I think the last one, vitrification, cryopreservation media. 
at this point, I, I really needed my uh, biologist to help me. It's a, uh, it was a paper from Peter Nagy, uh, from Atlanta, the evaluation of the effect of various cryoprotectants and protocols on donor oocyte survival and embryo viability based on the HOPE registry that data. The background efficiency of oocyte cryopreservation has been improved in recent years, but more clinical data on the effect of cryoprotectants on oocyte cryopreservation outcomes are warranted. The HOPE registry was a prospective phase four multicenter observational registry. In the USA, 16 centers. Uh, the hope is human oocyte uh, preservation experience. And the aim was to characterize oocyte survival rate, embryo quality, implantation and pregnancy rates for donor oocytes cryopreserved by either slow freezing or vitrification according to the cryoprotectant used in, the, in, the, in this uh, in this study. Uh, it was an analysis, a retrospective, uh, observational data from 136 patients, uh, and, that, and data were collected. Let's try to explain to, to you this. Look, the cycle level of implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate differed significantly among combinations of cryoprotectants for both slow freezing and vitrification. See, first, the, in, the, in the upper part of the graph, how, how many protocols we have in our labs? We, I had no idea of could be so many. And uh, the clinical pregnancy rates and implantation rates differed significantly among all of them. The, the, the best one was propanodiol, the first one here, um, propanodiol sucrosis, the first one. And the same happened when we consider vitrification. Again, uh, there was difference between comparing all of them. Although the oocyte uh, rates, the, the, the recovery, uh, was differed significantly among these combinations, both in this side and both in here too. That is, too many pro protocols, and always there is a difference in survival rate between them. Uh, here in the vitrification group, the best results were with the DMSO sucrosy. Okay. And after this, they compared. Uh, and I, again, I had no idea of this. I don't know uh, you that are clinicians like me, that there's a protocol for vit uh, uh, freezing, uh, uh, and there's a, another one for thawing and warming. And so there are many uh, less, le the, the number of protocols are less protocols here, but again, we have differences between them. And the results showed that the cycle level, again, of implantation rate and cl uh, clinical pregnancy rate this time did not si differ significantly among a combination of, cry of these cryoprotectants used for thawing during slow freezing and warming during vitrification cycles. That is, again, uh, implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate here were not different among the protocols. And here, among the protocols, no difference. But the oocyte survival rate, yes, it was different. Because in the slow freezing group, there was, it was not homogeneous, okay, there were differences about uh, the different protocols. And here in the vitrification, the, the answer, the, 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 the response was very, very stable. That is, uh, doesn't matter what the protocol you use for vitrification. When you thawed and warmed, 
the, 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 the result was stable, was better than slow freezing. And in the end, we have better results with vitrification than with slow freezing. And this is what we see, that nowadays almost all centers uses, uh, use vitrification. So, the conclusion, implantation rate of embryos transfer developing uh, fetal sacs and clinical pregnancy rate different by the combination of cryoprotectants used for freezing and vitrification in a slow freeze and vitrification cycles, but not for thawing warming in a slow freeze and vitrification cycles. And all site uh, rec uh, recovery differed by combinations of cryoprotectants used for freezing vitrification in slow freezing thawed and vitrification warm cycles. The, the conclusion, recently vitrification has become a more widely used cryopreservation technique than slow freezing. Different cryoprotectants could potentially influence the outcomes from ART cycles that use slow freezing or vitrification warmed our sites. That is, okay, we are discussing uh, freeze all, we are discussing devices, and we have to pay attention to these cryoprotectants. <laughs> and, and we are the clinicians that pay for the, the, the media and don't know <laughs> what is happening in our labs. So I think it's uh, the lesson to me, which is very, very important to talk with our crew all the time and together discuss what's, how things are going on. So the, the, the summary of the presentation, uh, in, given the, the clear benefits of feet versus fresh embryo transfer, clinics should consider a freeze-all policy. From, from Landoit, multinucleated embryos may have a good potential implantation, especially when cultured up to the five, six blast cysts. Uh, close the, the systems Vitrification is a high secured closed system. It was a cryobio system. Uh, ensures high implantation rates after uh, warmed embryo transfer in an unselected patient po uh, population. And from Peter Nagy, pay attention to the cryoprotectants you're using because they could potentially influence outcomes from your uh, program. Thank you very much. Thank you.